Dr. Kira for class. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome. It's Kira from FLAD. Thanks for having us and joining us um, Wednesday afternoon. So we are going to be talking all about this Halloween tree um, behind us. So I'm just going to walk you through some really great ideas, whether you are doing a Halloween tree, have a Halloween tree, or these are just some great ideas and decor items that you can make to be festive for Halloween. Um, John is in the other studio, so he's going to be answering questions like Kelly mentioned. So if you have a question, put it in the chat and we can try to answer it live. Um, we are using products that are all available at Michaels and Michaels.com. And again, I've got just a number of different great products. You can see I've got all my purples out here. Um, but again, if you have questions or want to see something, please let us know because we can totally do it on demand. And there's a lot of really great ideas um, to see. So we're going to be using just to go over some product. Um, and really, you can personalize these. So Halloween doesn't just have to be black and orange um, or purple and green. So really, whatever matches your decor or your style. We did a really like purple heavy tree, purple and oranges. So a lot of our projects, that's the color palette we're going to be using. But again, feel free to bring in any colors. Um, we are going to be using folk art multi-surface. So again, a lot of great colors. This is a beautiful um, eggplant. It's like a really deep purple. We are using Glitterific, which is the most glittery glitter paint you can see up here. I'm going to show you our topper. We have got a great, this chair swivels, which is amazing. Um, we've got a great um, faux pumpkin that we used. You can see that shine and sparkle. And all we did was we used Glitterific. We've got the purple and the silver and we coated him. So these pumpkins are really great to put around the base of your tree. Um, or again, these are just great to have in your house to decorate. Um, <clears throat> we also have color shift. So color shift is a, um, if you've joined us before and seen us use it, it is a paint that actually shifts in the light. So it's um, purple flash. So it actually shifts as you move it. So it's got a different look than metallic. Um, I've got some metallics here. So again, this really fun pumpkin here. Um, I've got some regular folk art, which is a matte finish. I have got Mod Podge Ultra, which we're gonna use for a number of different projects. And if you're not familiar with this, Mod Podge Ultra is our all-in-one glue and spray and finish sealer. All-in-one, it's indoor, outdoor, multi-surface. It's one of our newer formulas in the Mod Podge family and it comes in a matte and gloss. So this is really great to have on hand, especially with all this seasonal crafting coming up. So I've got um, some really fun uses for this, like other than just traditional decoupage and paper crafting. Um, I've got my regular Mod Podge here. I've got some gloss and just want to talk about pouring medium also. So again, we can um, just get into it. So I'm going to walk you guys through. So I don't know if you've seen, if you've been on Pinterest and on Michael's, um, they've got a lot of great inspiration. Um, Michael's website and their um, social are Halloween trees. So we um, got this great black tree. Again, you can use any tree if you have a white one, even if you have a green one, I think it's really great. Um, and you can even add some spooky to a regular tree um, with some different colored lights. So, you know, black lights, purple lights, a lot of really great options. Um, and now if you can see, we got um, just some um, purple lights on him and white lights. So again, a tree and we handmade all our decorations, which I love. So I'm going to kind of start through the top and work our way down and then show you guys um, some tips and tricks. And I'm actually going to craft a couple projects. So our topper, funny enough, if you can see this, it looks like a witch's hat. I hope you can see it. This is actually a um, cornucopia. So it is from the floral section um, at Michael's and um, it's like a cornucopia um, that you can use, um, you know, like for Thanksgiving and things like this. So this actually, we decided to make a witch's hat out of it and use as our topper. So we painted it with our folk art multi-surface. Um, in purple. And then we took our purple glitterific that I was talking about and we applied glitter to it. And the great thing about glitterific is that it is no mass glitter. So you're going to get all that sparkle and shine, but not have to use loose glitter on this. So I love that product for this. So we love that this looks like a kind of a creepy witch's hat. Again, so many great options. You could even just take a witch's hat and paint it and use. And we're going to do a technique using Mod Podge Ultra that actually stiffens the fabric. So you could take a typical witch's hat 
and actually use the Mod Podge Ultra to shape your witch's hat and then paint it. So we've got him. Then I'm gonna show you here in a minute. So these are ghosts that we made using cheesecloth. So um, you could use like any kind of mesh or lace, but this is actually using cheesecloth. And we used our Mod Podge Ultra and it actually stiffens the fabrics. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So these are really great. These would also be great just hanging. So you could hang them from your outdoor porch, indoor, you could hang them from the ceiling. Again, you can shape them, make them all different sizes. They're stiff once they dry. And then all we did was we painted some eyes on him. But I love these because you can actually make them so they hook onto the tree. So our ghosts are kind of just like floating on our tree. Um, we have some great little mini pumpkins and Michaels has these in like variety packs and bags. These are the faux pumpkins. And all we did was we took um, just some regular pumpkins, doesn't matter what color they start with. And we painted them with color shifts, you can see. And again, like I said, it shifts in the light. So it's that beautiful purple and like that iridescent, um, it's kind of like a gold color, like an opal color actually. So you can see this is a color shift pumpkin. Here's another one with the orange. So again, these are great because you can just pop these right inside your tree. So if you have some old pumpkins, even these would be great that you want to spruce up. We got some large spiders. We've got large and small spiders. And these are just black spiders. They started out just plastic spiders. And what we did was we took our Mod Podge Ultra. All we did was we sprayed it. Again, you wanna just prime your pump. The great thing about this is that it is a spray. Spray your spider. Let's fog right there for a second. Spray your spider and you can use matte or gloss. Anytime I use glitter, I really like to use a gloss finish. So spray your spider, then you just take your loose glitter, let it dry. And then I would take another coat of your Mod Podge Ultra and spray it because it's gonna lock in that glitter. So again, mess free with your Mod Podge Ultra. And I've said this before, I love Mod Podge Ultra for even sealing things that you've already purchased. Like, so say you buy an ornament, um, especially at Christmas that has a ton of glitter on it. And you find, you know, every year you pull out your ornaments and there's glitter everywhere. So grab your Mod Podge Ultra and just seal your ornaments that you pre you've bought already. It doesn't mean you have to make it from scratch, but this is a great way to keep that glitter on and not go back every year when you open your ornaments and you're like, oh gosh, this looks dull because half of the glitter has fallen off over the years. So this is a great way to add glitter and seal in your glitter. So we just did these to some giant spiders. Again, just very inexpensive. Again, Michael's has some great just shapes, whether they're wood or these plastic spiders. And all we did was we sprayed them with Mod Podge Ultra, applied our loose glitter, and then sealed it again with our Mod Podge Ultra. And John, if anybody has questions, just let me know. I'm kind of walking them through everything yeah. we've done on this tree. Sure. Yep. So I wish far, you guys could see the good. tree head to toe. It's so cute. Okay. So another thing that we did was we created, um, this one is actually in there. So these are wood letters. So again, Michaels has a lot of great fonts and letters. And we spelled out the word eek to actually put in our tree. Again, this is really great if you have just a table or a bookshelf or a mantle and you wanna do some personalized letters. Here, I'm gonna move some of my product out of the way. I always get all the um, classes that have all the things, like my table looks messy. So these are just white letters, they come white. If you wanna buy some unfinished ones, again, Michaels has great paper mache and wood letters. You can just paint it white. A multi-surface or a regular folk art is great for this. Let that dry and then we used our folk art pouring medium and we actually poured onto the letters. So we, we used black and orange and white and poured over the letters and let them dry. And we actually created these marble looks. So these are really cute. Again, you could just let these stand. You could use them as bookends, again, on your mantle. I love them in the tree. So again, this is kind of low. I don't know if you guys can see, I'm trying to uh, fill the tree up so you guys can see, but again, you can just let the letters. So you could do boo or eek. You could spell down or across. Also a great thing to do for Christmas if you wanted to do Christmas colors. So you could spell merry or bright. So again, I love these letters, a great way to incorporate them into your holiday crafting. Um, I'm totally destroying our tree here. Okay, we've done some more pouring. So we have poured on some pumpkins as you can see here. So again, some mini pumpkins and we did the same process. 
that we poured, we used um, orange, purple, and white, and we poured with our pouring medium. And you wanna use pouring medium because that means your paint is not gonna muddy and it's actually going to swirl and glide across your surface. So you're gonna get these beautiful like streaks and lines of paint. So you can pour directly on your pumpkin. Here's another really great version that we did. So we went ahead and we base coated an orange pumpkin gray. Again, just using your folk art. Folk art multi-surface is a great option, especially because it's indoor outdoor. So if you have a craft you wanna put outdoor for the holidays, grab some multi-surface, or you can use our Mod Podge Ultra, which is indoor outdoor. So it's gonna spray and see, or it's going to seal and protect your project. And we also have Mod Podge Outdoor. So again, another great pour that we did with purple and green and black. Here's another version of it. So it's just some great versions that you can get that poured look on your pumpkins. Um, okay, so another project that we did, and I'm gonna do this here in a minute. I'll show you guys how easy this is. So these are just, um, these are actually Christmas ornaments. They make them in plastic and glass. Again, Michaels has a ton of these, um, you know, already in the store this year. And we're gonna use Mod Podge Ultra and we're actually going to put loose glitter and we're gonna make these glitter ornaments. So you could really personalize these. You can leave them just sparkly or you can actually add paint and paint on the outside of them. And what else do we have on here? Okay, so I love this idea. So this is actually, Michaels has um, black floral and black branches. And what we did is since they were just plain black, we wanted to add a little pop of sparkle. Um, so what we did was we took Mod Podge Ultra, we sprayed our floral, we added the loose glitter all over it. Again, then took the Mod Podge Ultra, gave it another spray to seal it. And then we created like a giant pick basically to add to your tree. So again, I'm just drawing this tree as we talk. We're gonna have to put it together. But we did the same thing with a branch and we just added a little spider to him. But again, even if you have a branch from outside, grab a really fun branch that you have, paint it and add some glitter to it. So, and again, I just love the look of that. It's kind of like growing out of the tree and very creepy crawly. So a lot of great options. Um, so I wanna show you guys. Um, I'm gonna stick this in here. I'm gonna show you guys this ghost that we made. So he's really fun. So again, I'm using cheesecloth. So you need cheesecloth and a balloon. So just a regular party balloon and you wanna blow it up, inflate it. And however big your balloon is, that's gonna be the shape and size of your ghost head, I guess. Ghosts have heads in this. So whatever the shape of your balloon is. So if you go bigger, you're gonna have a big ghost head. If you go smaller, you're gonna have a smaller ghost head. And that's what we're actually gonna to use to form the ghost around. I've also got just some paper cups or plastic cups here. And I've got a paper plate here to work on. Cause this one gets a little bit messy. So I'm gonna be using Mod Podge Ultra. Again, you can use matte or gloss depending on the finish that you want. They both are indoor, outdoor, multi-surface, blue sealer, all in one. I'm gonna be using cheesecloth and a balloon and that's really what you need. Now, I also have some mason jars here um, because these are great. They are gonna actually help me form my ghost. So again, this is gonna help me just kind of prop my ghost up because remember you have to let it dry and then once it dries, that's the shape that it's going to take and that's how we created these. So we had the balloon in the middle and then we basically took um, the cloth and had it sit on top of these mason jars and these are great because it won't stick to it and we let it dry like that overnight and then this is done and you either remove or pop your balloon. So again, this is just the balloon that we had in there. So you can even, you could pop it or just remove it. And then once it's dry, we just painted little eyes on with our folk art paint. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Mod Podge Ultra, give it a quick shake. Again, um, the gloss or the matte will work great depending on um, what finish you want. And I am actually gonna use a cup and I'm going to fill not fill, but I'm gonna put enough because I wanna completely saturate my cheesecloth. So cut your cheesecloth, the ends don't have to be perfect. You just wanna have it the size of your ghost. So again, remember this is gonna be your ghost. So this is a square. Um, a square works really great for a ghost. Again, very loose. You could do small ones or big ones. Take your cheesecloth and you want to soak it in your uh, Mod Podge Ultra. So Mod Podge Ultra, when it dries on fabric or yarn or fibers, it's going to stiffen it. 
So it's really um, a great product to use because you can work with it and it seals and glues, but then when it dries, it's gonna be stiff on fabric. And then I'm going to squeeze it out. So I wanna make sure it's completely saturated. Squeeze it out and this is shoes cloth. You're not gonna work, <laughs> ruin it. Then I'm going to take my balloon. So this is all wet. I'm gonna take my balloon and I'm gonna drape it over. So here's my ghost. Now you could just let it dry like this and you can actually, you know, prop it up on something. You could attach your balloon to your jar or a large face and let it dry if you want it to be more like a traditional ghost. But if you wanna have it, you know, I liked him cause he looked like he was kind of floating and they worked really well in the tree because we could angle them and kind of have them like hanging out in the tree there. Um, so, um, you can actually, like I said, position it exactly where you want it to sit. Now, um, working on wax paper is also great with this on your surface because it's not going to stick to the wax paper. So again, just manipulate this basically however big if you want your, want your ghosts to be and let it dry. So if you, like I said, if you want your ghosts to be more traditional, and there's a lot of lead time in this kind of like a lot of working time. So you've got, like, don't worry, this isn't gonna dry immediately. Like you're still gonna be able to play with it and move it around and get your ghost perfect. Again, I'm just working on palette paper, wax paper or silicone mat is great for this. And again, you can go big and small, um, balloons are great. And again, so you would just let that dry, position it. And then once you're done is you're going to get your ghost. And then if you want, you can draw a face, you could add some glitter, you could do a whole banner. You, uh, you know, you could take a couple of these little ones and string them along and hang them on your mantle. Again, we just love them in our tree. So that is really fun to do to make these ghosts again, great for the whole family. Um, right. And because um, it's indoor, what's that? Uh, Gail was asking if it will also stiffen lace because she was thinking about doing some angels for Christmas time. Yes, so it will stiffen lace. Let me see. I have a lace project here somewhere. I don't know where it's at. It will absolutely stiffen lace, Gail. So it is perfect for angels. You could do the same technique. Absolutely. So any kind of fabric, fiber, burlap, ribbon, string, and yarn, this Mod Podge Arch Ultra will stiffen. But again, you've got to let it dry overnight, but then you're going to get that nice shape and form. You just pop that balloon and then you have your ghost or your angel. So I love the idea of an angel, especially for a tree topper, or if you wanted your, um, you could even do like a band, um, what do you call it, like garland with this would be really pretty with lace. So absolutely. Um, another great use for Mod Podge Ultra, and I'm just going to go ahead and reuse this Mod Podge Ultra that I poured out here so we're not wasting it are the ornaments. So we've done this for Christmas, but I love the idea for all seasons. Um, so you just remove the holder, the little cap that comes on your ornament and you can use this for plastic or glass. Go ahead and pour some ultra in your ornament. I'm making a mess here. Pull your, pull your arch, pull, pour your ultra, your Mod Podge Ultra, I cannot talk, into your ornament. Then I'm gonna take loose glitter. And again, if you wanna do this on a paper plate or a piece of paper so you can use any excess, um, again, totally great. And I'm gonna grab a purple glitter. So again, just a variety of glitters. Um, Michael's has so many beautiful packs of glitters also. So fine works really great for this, but you can see here, this is a chunkier um, glitter that we did, or you can combine your glitter. So we did like a really fine orange and then we added some like chunkier blacks in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and you can even use a piece of paper and make a funnel. Um, if that helps, you're not wasting as much glitter and it just doesn't, you know, make a mess. And then I'm just gonna use my thumb and I'm gonna squish around until it starts to stick. And this is what you're gonna end up with. So again, just pour out your excess and you can reuse these ornament to ornament. Now, if it looks like you've poured too much Mod Podge Ultra in there, just add a little bit of glitter. You kind of have to play with it. There's not like a one-to-one -one ratio. It really just depends. So there you go. You can always add a little bit more glitter to it. And you just want to get a good coat. And then what you can do is if you want, you can just let that dry open or you can go ahead and put your cap back on and it's going to dry no problem. If your glitter starts to run or set to one side, just give it another shake 
um, as it's drying. And again, this is what you're gonna get. So you're gonna have these personalized sparkle ornaments and a really inexpensive fun craft to do. This one, we mixed two glitters. We did orange and purple. So another fun one. And then you could do, if you're doing like an assembly line or doing a lot of ornaments, you can actually just go ahead and reuse this ultra and glitter that you have and pour it in another ornament. Just like keep working your way down. So you could even just take this little guy and you could pour right into this. And it cleans up. Mod Podge Ultra, while it's wet, is super easy to clean up with soap and water. So don't worry if you get it on your hands. I'm just using baby wipes. It's non-toxic. Um, so it is a really great craft for the whole family. So again, just keep creating your little ornaments, how fast that is. Okay, so I'm gonna move that to the side. John, any questions? No, uh, we've got a lot of comments. People are excited to do some of this stuff. People love the cornucopia hat. People are gonna have fun trying these that. things. Isn't that so, a great yeah. idea? And again, with the Mod Podge Ultra, if you wanted to, you could take a like fabric witch's hat and put the ultra on it and actually shape it and get that like kind of like crooked look to it if you wanted to. And um, um, Kara, can you show an up close view of the ornament? Maybe we switch to the overhead and you can hold it up. Yeah. Can you guys see these? Yeah, a little closer. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah ah! that's okay. it. That's what you need. It looks really close on my side. No, it's good. Wait, a little to your, yeah, there we go. Right there. Okay. So we've got orange and purple, solid purple, and then we did a loose, like a finer orange, and then put a black chunky glitter in there. So again, yeah. you can do so many different combos. Those look great. Yeah, I love this. And then again, I was talking about the flowers. You know, we did some floral. These are actually succulents that we um, purchased. We painted it black with black faux art multi-surface. So this was a green succulent, painted it, sprayed it with Mod Podge Ultra. So spray this down. Why are all my um, things clogged today? Because I'm trying to use them, right? That means people did not put the lids on them when we used them before. All right, so all you do is you need to go ahead and spray this down with Mod Podge Ultra. You could also paint it on actually, if you have just regular Mod Podge. And again, anytime I use glitter, I like a gloss finish so it doesn't um, dull my project or dull my sparkle. So you could use even regular Mod Podge. And then because Mod Podge dries clear, again, all we did was we took a regular everyday succulent green, painted it with black multi-surface. We let that dry. Then just take some Mod Podge. This is gloss. You can use the Ultra. If you want to have like a more control and you only want certain um, leaves or sections, this is great to use with a brush. And then again, you can just take your glitter and you can shake it right on there. And then again, just a fun way to create like a, an arrangement. So this is gonna dry completely clear and all you're gonna see is that purple sparkle. You can also, if you don't wanna deal with glitter like the mess I just made, again, Glitterific. So if you guys have not used Glitterific, it is super glitter. It is multiple size particles suspended in a clear base. It's non-toxic, again, which we love. Um, and Michael's carries such a great variety of colors. It's really thick. If you guys can see that, it looks like glitter poop coming out of there. So if you guys can see how sparkly that is. And again, all you need to do is take a brush, scoop it up so it's really thick and you can paint right on your leaves. So if you have a, a succulent or something like that, all you do is you paint it right on there and it's gonna give you that beautiful um, sparkle and look. So if what if you did like these all in your flower pots for Halloween would be really cute. We also did a, um, like a wine bottle or a glass bottle. So Michael's has a lot of great glass surfaces. So this was a purple one that we had, but all we did was we took our Glitterific and we just painted it right on our bottle. So again, if you had like a whole collection of wine bottles or glass jars and you just used these great colors of Glitterific just to add a little sparkle, you can also use them as a candle holder so if you wanted to, you could do like some wicked looking, um, you know, uh, candle holders and centerpieces. These are just um, candlesticks that we took and we painted them with color shift. And then again, we took our candles and the candles are actually painted with color shift. So you can even paint your candles. 
And then again, just a really fun centerpiece that this next to your tree and it all works together. But you can see that beautiful shine from the glitterific. And I love the combo sure. of color shift and glitterific. Did you tell people the trick about how to, to manipulate those candles like that? Because no, I, I okay. was typing and I wasn't so, sure if you said it. Yeah. No, okay, you guys, these are, and um, gosh, I wish I had some hot water. I'll show you guys. So yeah. these are just regular taper candles. Like you can get at Michael's, just taper plain candles. You use birthday candles. These are just regular candles. And then you put them in hot water. Like you get a tray of hot water you dunk them in hot water and then you can bend them. So all we did was we twisted these. We just basically used our hand, put it in hot water. Don't boil the water, just hot water. Like it's gonna, your hands, you're gonna be like, oh wow, that's really hot. Super hot water and just work your candle until it turns into this. So this was a regular taper candle. And then all we did was we took our color shift and we actually painted the candle. So um, we painted these black, but here again, if you took your purple color shift and you actually can paint right on there. So you get that really beautiful, if you guys can see that. So yeah, switch to the overhead, we'll yeah, see. I'm just quick. painting on top of black, but look at that beautiful gold purple color. So again, hot water. Gosh, we'll have to do a class on this. Okay, so <laughs> hot water, bend your candle, get the exact shape you want and then you could paint your candles. And yes, it's okay to light the candles once you're done with it, right, Kira? Um, yes, so I would not use anything that is alcohol-based. So I don't want anybody setting anything on fire. So if it is right. not an alcohol-based paint, it is fine. Again, I wouldn't leave your candle unattended. And typically candles like this, I don't burn. I just like them for decor. Um, or if you wanted that kind of burnt look, I would burn your candle first and then bend it. Um, but yeah. yes, we have actually lit these and they've been fine. But I just with, don't want to yes, be like, Sarah told me to light my painted candle on fire and it caught my house on fire. With the water-based paint, like my, like folk art, you, you'll be okay with that. But yes, yes. water-based. Just don't use anything that is alcohol-based. So always just be really careful. Yeah. But Even yeah, the glitterific, I would avoid for that because yeah, it does, because have, it does have alcohol. Alcohol in it. Uh-huh. But again, yeah. I love these just, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't burn a lot of my candles. I just love the look of this. So, so fun. Again, glitterific color shift and bend your candles. So again, just these were super straight white everyday tapers and we made them. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a great pumpkin. I have this one we started. So this is a pumpkin that we used our metallic paint on. And then if you can see, all we did was we took um, some folk art multi-surface in black. I'm gonna put some on my um, plate here. And if you just take a brush, all we did was we turned him into Fran a Frankenstein pumpkin. So we did little, um, they look like little stitches. So it's really simple to do. And you can do this on cards, on gift bags, on signs. Again, this is a great technique. Just draw a straight line. And then you basically just draw lines across. So it looks like that Frankenstein look. So it's really cute, but it's just another fun way. So you could do green would be really cute. We, lo we were loving purples, but green would be really cute for Frankenstein, but just a way to like be Frankenstein, I guess, and not be so literal. So it's just a really great pattern for Halloween that we love. Any questions, John? That was no, a lot I don't of think stuff. So. Yeah, um, we were. Yeah, I hope it totally inspired you guys. So it's not too late. Grab your tree. If you don't have a black one, get your Christmas tree out and decorate it. You can do your ghosts, you can hang them up. Again, we've got so many great products. Glitterific, Mod Podge Ultra, Mod Podge Outdoor. We've got our pouring medium. Um, so many great ideas. And we just wanted to inspire you. I know we're getting close to Halloween, but this is such a fun thing to do. And hopefully you can take some of these ideas and even go into fall and the holidays. So especially with the candles and the glitterific and the ornaments. So you guys, if you don't have any other questions, I just well, want to thank you. And um, one Andy question, could you- Yep. Okay. I mean, and I know you were just trying to wrap up, but Judy had a special request. No, you we got the... plenty of time. Okay. She wants to see how the pouring medium works. So can you just show real quick yes. on that? Okay. Yes. Let me, um, you have a I mean, it... yes, I'm going to improvise you guys. You know, Mix that's up what a I couple do. Colors okay. real fast. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'm just going to do, um, I actually have some wood letters here. Like we did. 
um, here. So I grabbed an O. I was thinking if you wanted to spell the word boo, you could totally do that. Okay, so you um, you can actually pour with Mod Podge Ultra um, also, but we're gonna use our pouring medium. So I've got some cups here, I'm improvising. Um, so I've got our pouring medium. So anytime you use our pouring medium or our Mod Podge Ultra to pour with, you want to use a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's one part pouring medium and one part paint. So it works great with all our folk art. You can use it with the specialty. So you can use it with color shift. You can use it with metallic. It's not gonna alter the look of your paint. So it's still gonna be shiny purple. And um, you know, it's not gonna change the color of your paint. So your purple is still gonna be purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my paint first. And I'm just using a plastic cup. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do color shift here. I've got some regular folk art here. So I'm gonna pour this in my cup. Again, a one-to-one -one ratio. Move that to the side. Then I'm gonna put my pouring medium in here. And then I'm actually gonna mix with the back of a paintbrush, but I would typically use a craft stick or a plastic spoon. Um, you can use a paintbrush again, you can clean this up so easily. Um, and what you wanna do is you wanna mix it really, really well. So you want that um, pouring medium to go away. It's like stirred into your paint, you wanna make sure, don't worry if there's any bubbles, those are gonna go away. And you want it to be like a thick syrup. So can you see that consistency? You want it to be thick, but still have movement. So, you know, when it comes out of the bottle, it's really thick and it's not gonna pour. So you're adding that pouring medium that gives it movement. So again, you can use as many colors as you want. I've got a purple here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some more. So I'm going to use, let's go, I'm gonna use green. I've got green color shift here. Again, all good for Halloween. So this would be a really cute pumpkin to paint. Paint your pumpkin, green color shift or green metallic and then add those Frankenstein lines on would be really cute. Okay, I'm gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio. And again, the more you do pouring, you get a feel for what um, the consistency should be. But again, you want it to be like a thick syrup. So again, this is color shift, mixing the pouring medium right in. You can still see that shift in color. Okay. I'm just wiping the backs of my brushes off. Good as new. Again, I'm just using baby wipes. The stuff cleans up. It is messy, but it, you know, while it's wet, it cleans up easy with soap and water or baby wipes, which is our one of our favorite things. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a black. So if the letters are already white, I'm just gonna add this black to my cup. And again, same process, one-to-one -one ratio, one part pouring medium, one part folk art paint. Again, you can use multi-surface, regular, and specialty. One-to-one -one ratio, and I'm just eyeballing it. Again, um, you know, once you get into the swing of things. And Michael's has, we've done a lot of great videos on Michael's Community Classroom with the pouring. So you definitely wanna go and check those out in their library of free on-demand videos because you can actually see, you know, get some more information about pouring. Okay, so I've got, that's actually maybe blue. That's fine, it'll be blue. Yeah, that's a great point. Kira, um, earlier, I guess it was over the summer, I'm not even exactly sure when, but she had, mm -hmm several full length classes just on pouring and different styles of pours. Yeah. So if it is something yep. you're interested in, I would invite you to go back and check those yeah. out for sure. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and pour on this. Typically we would use, we use baking pans a lot. So we use disposable baking sheets, old like cookie baking sheets, silicone mats, um, anything that you don't mind getting messy that it's easy to remove the paint from. We also typically take our surfaces and we use a flat back um, push pin or uh, thumbtack, and we actually use it to hold our surface up to, so the paint runs off. But again, this is totally going to work. So if you were doing boo, this would be one of your O's, but I would do it. I would get all my letters. I would do them all at once. So I would lay out my B, O, O, and I would pour across all the letters at the same time, because then it's going to look like one giant marble pour. Um, you can absolutely do individual, but I love the look of doing one pour all together. So again, I'm just gonna start, I've mixed my paint and I'm just going to pour this right onto my letter. And I'm gonna leave some white show. And you can always go back and add more. And again, it just depends how much white you want to show. 
And then all you do is you move around. So can you guys see that movement? So you're gonna see, look, where it starts. It's not gonna get muddy. If you poured purple, blue, and green or black together, you would end up with a just a mush of color. And you can see here, you can see all that movement and what that looks like. So again, you can add as much color as you want. If you're like, oh, I really like this with the dark, you could always go back and add a little bit more dark to it and you're gonna get that movement. And again, just let run off what you don't want. So the more you move it, the more movement um, you are gonna get and change the look. So again, so cute. You could do right here on your tree, you could do your BOO, um, just like I did the cake. So I hope that helped with the pouring question. Um, yeah. Again, you could pour right onto your pumpkin. So again, grab your pumpkin, you could base coat it. This was one that we just painted all white and the same technique. So you could pour it down it to get more of that like lined look, right? So you can just pour, pour, pour. Again, this is really fun. Just mix up a bunch of colors, you know, this weekend or next weekend, if you know, it's a great way to celebrate. Um, mix up a bunch of colors and just get some surfaces and make some fun projects. You know, there's not really a right or wrong, especially with pouring. So you could leave this just like this and it would just look like it's straight pouring like we did, or you could actually move your pumpkin around and completely coat it and really make it look like a marbled pumpkin. You could add some white, you could even go back and add some glitter. You could add, when you're done, you could even add some glitterific. I wouldn't pour with the glitterific. It's not gonna have that movement, um, but you can see, look at that. It's a beautiful marble. So you can get that streaky look or, and basically just keep maneuvering it because the products, the paint is gonna move on your pumpkin and you can just go back and hit it with some more if you have a spot that's like kind of not covered. But again, just keep adding and move it around and you're gonna get this beautiful, beautiful marbled pumpkin. And any color, again, these are just what I have here, but again, this is color shift, this is folk art um, and multi-surface and all of them work great together. And then if you wanna put this outside, either use all multi-surface or once it's dry, go ahead and seal it with your Mod Podge Ultra or your Mod Podge Outdoor. So again, I think, I mean, that actually turned out pretty cool, John. So again, you can yeah, leave the great. white or you can completely cover him all the way. So really fun. And again, just because it's Halloween, it doesn't have to be orange and black. So definitely like bring in different colors, you know, whatever you're kind of feeling, um, bring those colors into your decor, you know, whether it's with the glitter and the Mod Podge Ultra, or, you know, you're adding some to your floral, again, to your pumpkins. This is another great pumpkin we did. We even talk about this. All we did was we painted this black and then we splatter painted with our orange folk art. So all we did was we splattered him and he just is like a really fun look too. And you can even stick him in your tree depending on the size of your tree or do a bunch of pumpkins under your tree that make it look like presents. So we did that here at the office. This tree actually, once he's all fixed up, he lives in our lobby. And what we did was we put some black tool around him to make a tree skirt. And then we just took all these great pumpkins that we've done and we piled them up. So it looks like a bunch of presents. So it's very like a nightmare before Christmas. So um, yeah, so John, I don't know if there's more questions. I'm happy to answer them. I wasn't trying to rush anybody off. Nope, I think we've got it now. So that was great. Okay. Everyone everyone uh, was loving it. We had a lot of great ideas that people were looking forward to trying for sure. Yeah, you know, I love when we can walk you guys step by step through a project, but I also just love to inspire you. So I think these are a lot of great techniques and we've got a lot of great product that is fun to do no matter what season is. And, you know, you guys are so amazing, like posting your projects and we can watch like what you're doing and inspire us. So, and again, so many great classes on Michael's community classroom page that go back and check out, especially with the pouring. Um, and again, I love this. We'll be doing some Christmas projects coming up, which I can't believe it already. Um, and Andy Jones will be here tomorrow at four o'clock. So he's going to be teaching you guys some painting. So just real quick, there were a couple things at the end. So um, someone was, Debbie was asking, how long can we access this recording? So they will put it up on the Michaels website, but they also put it on their YouTube channel. So once it's on the YouTube channel, it's pretty much there to stay. So you, you'll have no problem getting it. Um, check back in the next day or two for that. 
Also, if you do make any of these projects, we would love to put them on social. We love to see that. So you can hashtag plaid crafts, but also hashtag um, make it with Michael's. Make and, it with Michael's, yes. And hashtag Michael's classes um, so that we can see these and share um, them as well. So we look forward to that. Yeah, you guys, thank you, definitely. We wanna see what you make. Hashtag plaid crafts, hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, let us know, because we get excited to see what you guys are making and we're like, oh, that's a great idea. So excited to see what you guys do. Yep. All right, so I guess that's it for this week. We'll see you later, everybody. All right, thanks guys. Have a great rest of the week.